Hello, everybody, and welcome to Arsenal Pass. Today we have another deck tech with T, our guest. He's joined us again, and he has a class constructed brew for Everfest. Um, it's going to be a dash deck, which is really interesting. Um, we are recently coming off the results of um, SEG. So we saw a lot of Starvos <laughs> in that top eight, and I think a Chain and a Briar as well. I was surprised at the results myself. Um, how did you feel, T? Uh, it was interesting. I expected there to be more Prism in the top eight because there was a lot of people running around the room early in the morning looking for cards for Prism, mm -hmm. and that did not convert well for top eight. Interesting, too, um, because Prism traditionally has a decent matchup into Guardian, so maybe Starvo is just... Um, it's tall enough, right? And also that Go again definitely does help clear auras. Anyway, the deck at hand today. You've got a dash deck in front of us. Tell me a little bit about the deck. What's this kind of core archetype? Is it a boost deck, aggro, mid-range, a transformational sideboard? Let's hear it. Uh, I like to call this my dash control deck because it is a dash deck where you like to control the game state. Um, you kind of just want to set up as many items as you can through the early game and then take a little bit of damage while you're doing that. Uh, and then late game, you're just going to block with a couple of cards from your hand, keep a blue or two, and shoot them down for a billion. You don't really boost in this deck. My main philosophy here is if you boost, you're wrong. Um, so your your armor, like your Teclo Foundry Heart, is just there for efficient blocks. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of your deck is just blue pitch block threes that happen to be Mechanologist cards because they fit the class. Uh, I try as much as I can with those cards to find things that are power three or less because we do have the belittle engine in here with two blue minnowisms. That way, in case you get hit with something like a Crippling Crush and have to discard one, you don't have a bunch of dead cards in your deck. And then also there are some times where you do just end up with two belittles and want to go get double minnowism to kind of just take over the game. Mm -hmm. In the context of Everfest and some of the new cards we got, as well as, of course, in the context of the bannings that we saw in Arata, why do you think the dash is positioned well in this upcoming Class Constructed meta? So I've been playing Dash Control since towards the beginning of RTN season last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've got a lot of reps on this deck and testing different variations in different matchups. And it struggles against things that go really, really wide, really, really fast. Um, like yep. how Chain could pass turn four in the past meta. So that's, that's kind of what brought it down before. But now we're looking at this meta where you can deal with those kind of decks where it's Prism and Katsu doing those things. And it's a lot easier to deal with them doing it than chain. Um, and you still get to sometimes save some cards, soak a little bit of damage, and then come back through with a with a decent amount of damage yourself. You're also looking at these decks like Bravo Showstopper and Bravo Star of the Show that have this kind of go tall strategy with a little bit of go wide, and it doesn't quite matter as much because you can play like six unmovable and feel fine about it. Yeah, and you're traditionally pretty good into into Prism. Um, Talk to me about this card, This Rounds on Me, because this is actually one of the cards I'm most excited for out of Everfest if we look at Fab on a very long timeline. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's going to immediately have a mass effect. It kind of seems like a sideboard card in a lot of situations, but it's weird, right? The effect is really powerful, minus one. Uh, the first thing you're going to think about is, is Katsu Ninja, but you're also giving your opponent a card, and often when you give a lot of these these decks a card, that you know these are decks that are going wide, but they're also decks that are they're traditionally most powerful when they're playing five card hands versus four card hands. So you're potentially giving them a six card hand in order to reduce you know, the, the power of everything by minus one. Talk to me about this card's use case and yeah, just about the card a little bit. Sure. So in the dash control strategy, if you're playing against something like aggro katsu, you're, you're not as much worried about the attacks that they're going to push through as much as you are the small things that they're going to start with, like your kadachis. You kind of have to cower back and let those through if you're going to plan to block out the big combo chains. So this lets you not be worried as, about those as much. It's going to stop the Kadachis. It's going to make them start on like a leg tap or a surging strike or 100 wins or whatever it is. And it's much easier for this deck to block those out, kind of take a turn off and be like, all right, here's my hand. We're going to block out your big scary combo turn and then get back to it next turn and try to shoot you down some more. This card also deals really well against Aura Prism. It can help you come back in case there was something that went wrong and you had to give them an aura and let multiple auras through. 
Uh, this can stop their big chain attacks, and then you just get to turn it back and shoot them a bunch, and then shoot down some auras, and kind of not feel as bad about if you take the back foot in the early game against Prism. Mm-hmm. So general strategy is kind of the dash control check, <coughs> dash control deck. Some of us know and love, some of us know and hate, where you're effectively assembling Exodia, poking down your opponent while surviving to achieve that point. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. These items are scary once you can get multiples of them out, and once you do that, you can kind of just take over the game. How do you feel about Dash in the context of the new generic card that uh, pops items? <laughs> I kind of forget the name, but you know which one I'm talking about. Smashing good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when that when that first got spoiled, and we saw that it was a rare, and we saw that there were going to be nine of them potentially in a deck because of blue, yellow, and red, I was a little worried at first, and I was like, man, maybe Dash Control's dead. But uh, I don't think it's as scary as it seems. This deck already does... Like, after thinking about it, this deck already just kind of wants to block out a lot, and sometimes you just have to take a turn off. Um, The worst thing that happens is they go, all right, here's my smashing good time, and you go, all right, I'm going to set my hand on the table and preserve my items. Or you might just, like, keep an item back in your hand or in your arsenal so that you can replay it and not have to worry about them blowing one up. Uh, Initially, I thought maybe this is just going to be like Arg Smash, where you just want to side in Remembrance if you're going to be playing a matchup where you think they might have item destruction. Mm Hmm. I don't even think it's that scary, though. You just take a turn off, block out as much as you can, and just save your items. And then next turn, just like in the aggro strategy, whenever they have a scary turn, you just get right back to it afterwards. Yeah, I'm assuming worst case scenarios usually when are going to be when you're surprised by it, either being played on the kind of uh, end of a combat chain when you've already done a bit of defending. Maybe you've seen a, a whelming gust wave, you know, quite early on the line. They're able to go a little bit farther, and then they end up surprising with the special instinct. Or, of course, combat tricks, you know, a razor reflex, a lightning press, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, yeah, how do you – so do you feel like this deck is preying upon – some of the more popular decks in the meta because we're talking about katsu and these aggregate wide decks but they're actually not represented at the time of this recording we're looking at you know if you're if you're looking to bring a deck to pro quest week one you need to be thinking about bravo star of the show number one prism probably number two and then of course you know fringe maybe fringe maybe not fringe but briar chain um and viscerai so how do you feel into particularly prism and bravo Prism and Bravo have been interesting. Uh, I've done a lot of testing in those matchups. Against Bravo Showstopper, it's a little bit different than normal because they have the option to be playing the shield now, which can be kind of scary. But I do think it's correct for Bravo Showstopper to be just still playing a Nothos into the matchup and trying to apply pressure. Mm -hmm. They have a lot more guarantees off of things like Zealous Belting and Rouse the Ancients than they did before because of all the new Mm -hmm. blue block threes with high power. They get to take their fives and sixes out of the deck and just play like eights and tens. Um, so that part's a little interesting. They get to apply more pressure. So in those matchups, you just have to take a little bit more damage and try to get more items out early than you normally would before trying to turn the corner and just shoot them down a bunch. Uh, and then with Bravo star of the show, you need to be siding in things like unmovable to hit the important on hits so that you can still maintain pressure into the later game. And like winter's whale, if they, if they do their Bravo star of the show thing, and they go, pitch my lightning, play my earth, come in for nine go again. That part doesn't matter as much. You can just block some, take some. You have a bunch of defense reactions in the deck, so you can slap them in arsenal and soak up a bunch of the damage. And then if they come in with Winter's Whale after, that means they either don't have a pulse in their hand, so it's going to be a lot less likely that they're going to have Star of the Show again, or they're going to not have an arsenal. And so if they don't have an arsenal, you get to apply a bunch of pressure. That deck doesn't really block very well. They mm-hmm. just kind of take a lot and try to deal back a lot. And then if they hit you with Winter's Whale by pitching the ice card that they had, then one Frostbite in this deck doesn't hurt it almost at all because you're already this high density of mm-hmm. blue deck where you just pay a bunch of mana and sometimes have some left over. So those Frostbites don't hurt as much. Yeah. It's just about the damage and trying to deal more than they can deal to you. <laughs> then with things like Prism, you just kind of have to deal with the auras. Um Herald Prism can be a little scary, but it's not well positioned in the meta, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if they're just playing an aura every turn, you just get to shoot them with a bunch, give your weapon go again, and then on the last shot, you shoot down the aura. Yeah. Okay. Spicy question. Theoretical feature where Viscerai is the most represented deck. It's, It's dominant, per se. How do you feel into that matchup? And 
what do you think that you're facing when you play against a viscera? Are they going to try to OTK you? Or does there maybe exist some crazy mid-range aggro version of that deck? I think that crazy mid-range aggro isn't as crazy as it sounds. I think that, that could be running around because I think that deals better with things like Prism and Bravo Star. Um, most of the time, I think if somebody sits down against a dash, they're going to expect me to be on aggro, so they're going to have to play a game plan anticipating that. Or like a mid-range strategy, whereas this one is very much control. I do kind of a hedge board in the Viserai matchup. Mm -hmm. I anticipate them to be OTK, but I sideboard in some of my red defense reactions that are block fours to hit those important thresholds against blocks if it is mid-range. And then we can also efficiently block Arcane Barrier because of the high density of blues. So it's not it's not as bad. It's just about leaking damage at the right times and making sure you're hitting those important on-hit blocks and then trying to come back for more damage than they dealt to you. Absolutely. So will you be playing this deck for your week one coming up here in, like, what is it, two, three, four, no, three, four days? Are you going to be playing this on the weekend? I, I am between three decks right now, so I'm I'm crazy. I'm playing in eight different pro quests over the next four weeks. Of course you are. One, <laughs> one every day that they're available. Um, so I'm going to be cycling through a bunch of decks. Um, I anticipate that if I'm playing in that many and not doing awful, that I'll probably qualify for the Pro Tour even if I don't win one just off of XP. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So I'm just going to be trying a bunch of different decks to see how this meta really shapes out and what... Uh, what interesting brews that we get coming out in these pro quests. Awesome. Well, again, thank you T so much for coming on doing this quick deck tech. The deck list will be linked below in the description. Check it out, pick it up, take it to your first pro quest um, or second as we come in here to week one and week two, try to snag that pro tour invite. Um, T has been kind enough to do a write up, a little bit of a more detailed write up with a sideboard guide and some notes on each matchup, which we'll be hosting on the Patreon as well. If you want some extra info, but other than that, I'm really interested to see how this meta plays out um, in the early weeks of the ProQuest because it was, it's been a bit black and white, cut and dry, as you could say, in, in previous Road to National seasons where Chain kind of rose to the top and remained there. Interested to see if we'll have more of a rock, paper, scissors format uh, throughout this season. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think Bravo's on top now, but all it's going to take is one, uh, one big testing group to figure out what, what kind of counters that, that elemental Bravo strategy. 100%. Well, again, thank you so much, T. And the, Absolutely. Yep, the link will be in the, in the description below. Let us know what you think. And good luck to everyone playing in week one of the ProQuest. Mm -hmm.